How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Blue Shooting and welcome back to Mamiya. Now, things are getting a little interesting. So, we're here with Kato and Ryo as they've gone, they started like looking around because Ryo doesn't have many memories, but he remembers a town, some kind of town, but he doesn't know anything about it other than the fact that it's not the town that they're currently in. So they've been kind of starting to do these trips. And then Ryo saw on the television, like, the sea, the ocean, and he got captivated by it. So he's like, can I go to the ocean? And so Kato's like, all right, sure, let's uh, skip, let's take a, like, a day off school and we're just going to go. So they've headed down and they're kind of arriving here, but there's kind of this odd atmosphere already. So I stopped last time at this point because I'm curious to see what's going to be happening next. And we we're getting to like the about the length that I usually want episodes to go. Plus these ones, because I say all the lines get a little like rough on my throat and it's not great because today <clears throat> I've already been talking a lot so if I get a little shorter than usual it's mostly because of that like if my throat starts giving out it's like there's no point in continuing but I should be fine we're gonna jump into it because there's not really a whole lot else to say other than the fact that we're trying to find figure out the mystery oh I guess last episode to Mamiya an invisible entity that seems able to like guide dreams or or maybe it wasn't dreams because like Kato was thinking he was dreaming when Mamiya took him flying but that morning he was everyone was saying hey you look really tired like you haven't been sleeping so like maybe it wasn't a dream and Mamiya is just some kind of creepy like wish fulfiller I don't know it's it's odd but yeah there's just a lot to kind of go to so at this point, Mamiya seems like a weird ghost, but I imagine it's a lot more complicated than that. So, let's just jump right in, shall we? Huh? I'm not so sure if I remember the sea being around here. So. Unable to contain his emotions, Ryo led the way while pulling me behind him. That's right, they use like a, like a, like a leash or something for some reason. I don't get why. Wow, it's the sea! It was summer. We could even go for a swim. Real? Do you, did you remember something? Can I stay here for a while? Oh, of course. All right. With his gaze directed at the sea, Ryo fell completely silent. I backed off a bit so as not to get in his way. <sighs> I felt a tug on my lead in my hand, along with a pang of guilt in my heart. To tell you the truth, huh? I could actually remember my dream just fine. I just didn't want to tell you. Felt like it might come true if it did. Wonder what his dream was. I retain I, re I retained a subtle distance between the two of us while gently pulling on the lead. How much time had passed without either of us saying a word? The sand beneath my feet felt almost otherworldly, like I came from another dimension. The ashen sea, having endured several days of rain, continued to rage. It would surge up and over and over again. The waves roared. I stared on, thought, thoroughly captivated by the sea, when suddenly... My vision blurred for a moment. Okay. I felt a splitting headache come on. Ugh! Unable to maintain my balance, I fell to my knees. My vision began to twist and warp as a somewhat familiar image showed up. And in that hazy vision... Rio. I silently, I silently left to consciousness. I came to in a room. Huh? What? Where was I? Ryu and I were on the seaside, but now we have nowhere to be seen and gone and gone with his lead. Ryu? As I uttered that name, someone grabbed me by the chin. Gah! Nice to meet you, so Kato. It was a man I didn't recognize. He had rough hands and was surrounded by a thick smell of tobacco. I have been waiting to meet you for the longest time. I have even dreamt about it. I forced out a groan through my hand covering my mouth. Why? How did this happen? And who was this man? My thoughts were a complete jumble. I even felt my eyes moisten with tears. Well, yeah! I mean, you literally fall unconscious and wake up in the hands of a mysterious stranger who's like, you know, effectively got you in their power. I'd be terrified. You have no idea how much I loathe you. Your very existence makes me sick. Don't act like you know Mamiya, you little brat. Mamiya? I looked up at the man as I heard Mamiya's name. However, it was too dark for me to see his face. Seemingly angered by my stare, the man clicked his tongue and slammed me to the floor. Okay, okay, what the? 
So Mamiya is a share. I, that's the title of the thing. It's a, I was about to say it's a shared illusion, but that's the title. Oh gosh, darn it. I should have known. Blah. <laughs> I can feel this rough, cold surface of the concrete crash against my cheeks. Ugh. The man looked down at me. Listen well. I couldn't think straight. My vision was a blurry mess, and there was only one thing on my mind. Why? Mamiya belongs to me. Why did this man know Mamiya? So. So. Suo. Suo. That, it's technically Suo. Suo. Uh. You okay? Hold on. Uh, I. Relax. Sit up, but take it slow. Hold on to me. As I held onto Ryu's shoulder, the two of us started walking back down the path we came from. I slowly lowered myself onto a nearby bench. So, that was also just kind of a weird illusion thing. <sighs> I could still feel the concrete against my skin, and the pain as, though, as those thick bony fingers held me. Even his gross voice rang in my ears. His tone was like a freezing chill creeping into you. Huh. 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 What is this? What's wrong? What's wrong? Can't you hear it? Hear what? Something screeching. I can't hear a thing. Really? That's that's odd. I could hear it in the distance. It's screeching really loud. And for some reason, it sounds familiar. It reminds me of, of ice floats. That's a weird... Okay. It's so loud. It's still going. I think you need a doctor? Uh... Mamiya. Suo? You're there, aren't you? Huh? What was that person to you, Mamiya? I thought I was the only one who could see you. So, what's going on? Mamiya! Answer me! Or could it be that you've, you're you already talking? And I just can't hear you? I mean, it's screeching so bad, it's drowning out everything else. A while later, Ryo carried me back home. However, the sound of, I of ice flows never died down. Oh, Kato. Oh, Kato. My poor, poor Kato. Suo? Are you okay? Uh, can can you take a bath by yourself? Uh, your face is all red. I think you've got a fever. Go to sleep. I shouldn't have told you about wanting to go to the sea. I'm sorry. Ryo, I... Good night. That she's really he's really out of it. I'll change your sheets. Huh. Come on, drink up. No. You've got to stay hydrated. Ugh. You okay? Uh, he's like coughing or something. Sorry for being too pushy. I'll go slower now. Real. I'm sorry I caused you so much trouble. Don't worry about it. Worry instead about getting better. Okay. I'll make you some porridge in case you get hungry. Thanks. You need to rest. He pulled the covers over my shoulders and gave me a gentle pat. That alone was enough to make me tear up. Could have just been a fever, though. Did you manage to sleep? Uh. He's tossing around in his bed. I wonder if he's having a nightmare. Mom. Dad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry it's just me. And not an adult with actual power to do something. Are you awake? Rio? You feel like eating? Yeah, I'm starving actually. I'll go warm you up. Uh, warm up your porridge. 
You can have it while you wait. You can have this while you wait. Oh, wow. A peach. It's just some leftovers. I know how much you like them. I took a bite of the peach, allowing its sweet juice to fill my mouth. <laughs> it tastes good. Glad to hear it. I wonder... If this is what it feels like to have an older brother. <laughs> yeah, right. Like I'd want to have a giant for you, like a little bro for a little brother. Ow. Just then, I felt like I could hear a faint chuckle escape Ryo's lips. The gentle taste of peach stayed in my mouth, melting away my riled up feelings. What the heck happened? The weathercaster on TV diligently explained the situation. Wow, that typhoon looks crazy. It's so rare to see one of those in December. The windows are rattling pretty hard. It doesn't look like we'll be able to go out today, or even tomorrow. The slanted rain was pattering on the branches outside the window. I found myself captivated by their rhythmic movements. To my side, Ryo looked like he was about to say something about the stormy sky. Are you planning to go out, Ryo? I've got work tomorrow. It's just a daily employment, so I don't really have to go, but I'm worried about your health. Oh, I'm feeling much better now, thanks to you. Good. They'll probably let you take tomorrow off, so why not just stay home? We could spend the whole day relaxing. Doesn't that sound great? Okay, okay, fine. I'll be looking forward to it. Great! Well then, have a good night, Ryo. Thanks. Hmm? Are you really going to be alright by yourself? Come on, what's gotten into you all of a sudden? Don't tell me you're afraid of the typhoon. There's no need to worry. In this house, we're safe from both rain and wind. Lightning, too, for that matter. Yet still, Ryo retained a gloomy expression. I wonder if he's thinking of leaving. In that moment, a certain feeling washed over me. The typhoon might have had something to do with him losing his memory. I suddenly felt guilty for making light of it. Don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Really? Really? Well, <sighs> I see. I'll be off then. Are you sure you don't want to sleep together? Absolutely sure. Ow. And remember, you'll have to tell me about your dreams. I will. Good night. Ryo returned to his room. The sound of the rain reverberated in the darkness. Good night. Why did I always feel so uneasy during typhoons? I don't know, they're loud and can be destructive and make a tree fall in your house. As I watched the swirling cloudy sky, I felt like something just might happen. In that deep dark, deep darkness. I ended up drifting off to sleep, unable to comprehend the nature of those feelings. I heard the piercing sound of rain. It reminded me of needles. And sorry, like, I'm absolutely yawning because I didn't get a great sleep last night, and it doesn't help the raining. Like, the sound of rain has always been relaxing to me, and I always sleep better when it's raining. And so it's like, I actually am feeling sleepier now because, like, of the, the background noise. It reminds me of needles. I felt like I was becoming one with the storm. I... Darn, darn noise. Why is this door... Why is the door open? So... I had always been expecting a certain something. Whoa. So, so. Where are you, so? What is going on? The world was filled with mystery and wonder. So! And so, I believe that one day I too would be chosen. Okay. The rippling surface of the water and the star studded sky reflected in it. It was a sweet, blissful dream. Tomorrow. The day after tomorrow. The day after that. The days come and went. Things that truly mattered grew vaguer, hazier. I hoped we could exchange a gentle smile. The way we did when we met in the dream. Uh, uh, uh. Hmm? 
As I woke up, I found myself in Ryu's arms. Huh? Who are Ryu? I heard he held me in a powerful grip and seemed to be of no mind to let go. <coughs> mm. No good. In the end, I gave up on struggling and decided to just surrender myself to whatever he would do. He looked tired. Uh. Oh, are you awake, Ryu? So. Huh. Jeez, what was that for? I nearly broke into a smile, but then noticed that Ryu's teeth were ch ch clattering. He was shivering all over. Did you have a bad dream? It's okay. I'm here. It's alright. Everything's fine. Good morning, Sil. Good morning. That typhoon sure was something else, huh? The forecast said today would be the same, but look, not a cloud in the sky. Here, I thought I was gonna get another day off. <laughs> it's glad to see everyone again. It was really noisy, though. My window kept rattling so bad I almost thought it would come off. Me too. I couldn't sleep at all. <laughs> really? I didn't even notice. You really just too heavy a sleeper. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? What happened? I'm home, Ryu. Welcome back. I'm sorry. School started and the weather's so nice. I feel guilty for not going. It's fine. Don't worry about it. We can hang out in the next day off. I guess. Well then. I took out my notebook from the drawing draw, drawer and began cheerfully flipping through its pages. I gotta jot down my dream while I still remember it. I clutched my pen and was just about to start writing one. Ha! Huh, real! Perfect timing. I was actually wanting to call you over. Really? Yeah, I'm about to add a new entry to my dream diary. You said you enjoyed reading them, so... So... You need to stop doing that. Huh? Stop writing down your dreams. What? Uh, why? You always look so happy when I tell you about them. And it means a lot to me. I can't believe you, of all people, will tell me to stop. You're losing your ability to tell dreams and reality apart, aren't you? Huh? What are you talking about? You believe your dreams have actually happened in real life. So I want you to stop. What the fetch? Look who's talking. You've got no memory and no way of telling what's right and what's not. So, well, you should go to a hospital. Why me? You're the one with amnesia. You're just... You don't remember walking all over town last night, do you? What? What are you talking about? Are you sure you didn't just dream all that up? Then, how do you explain those wounds in your legs? Huh? At the thing that you kept mumbling to yourself. Uh... I'm not sure who, who you think you're talking to, but there's no one there. Y you're wrong. Mamiya is just invisible, which is why others can't see him. Suo, so, uh, I enjoy hearing about your dreams. To me, dreams are only meant one thing, fear. But you managed to turn them into a source of entertainment, which is why I liked yours. However, it ceased being entertaining the moment it started interfering with real life. You're not making sense. Well, neither are you, Mr. Talking to Invisible People. Think about that. I have no idea what you're even talking about. So, open your eyes and look at reality, for goodness sake. These words touch something inside me. Something very, very important. Slumbering deep within me. <coughs> huh. I'll step out for a bit. Mamiya? You're there, aren't you? Mamiya, am I... Am I weird? Am I wrong to rely on you? I mean, you're... You're my friend. That's right. I'm your friend, Kato. And to me, you're irreplaceable. You feel the same way about me, don't you? Yeah. But you have no body. That's true. You're invisible. <coughs> I see. You're the only one who can sense me. Ryu said that it was weird to have a friend like that. Is it? It's what he said. I see. Well, it's true. I'm different from most people in the sense that I have no body. I'm an unusual being as they come. But it's all a matter of perspective, really. 
Is it? Yeah. I may not have a body, but my words reach you just fine, do they not? Surely our relationship isn't so fragile that the mere idea of it being weird would affect it. You're right. It's not. You mean a lot to me, Mamiya. I can sense you in my heart. That mistake, you're real. Then simply ignore what others say about us. The only thing that matters is what you believe in. You're right. You know, it's kind of weird. I'm starting to feel like nothing that's happened really matters anymore. Despite how it hurt, might hurt, might much it hurt me, but I don't think I want to see Rue for a while. That's kind of troubling, actually. Mr. Samajima, what are you doing here? Kato, would you mind coming along for a drive? Huh? But I've got school. Just to call in sick. Come on, hop in. Huh? M Mr. Samajima. A f Jeez, you're being awfully forceful. Cut me some slack. I've been really looking forward to this. Here, I'll even play any of your favorite tunes. Okay, okay. This is gonna end well. This is gonna just end great. Oh, I love it. I just love it. I love the way this is going. Mr. Samajima reached out and flipped a switch on the dashboard. That's lovely. A second later, an upbeat song started playing from the car. Oh wow, I'm surprised you're into this kind of music. The truth is, I'm not. I actually just rented it from uh, Sutaya for the first time. See, even got a card. Driving and upbeat music go hand in hand. Your dad taught me that much. Just how love, I, I just love how the feel good the lyrics are. It sort of makes you want to do your best, you know? Hmm, is that so? By the way, have a look. I, I brought some light snacks too. Sandwiches and milk. They all have different fillings, so feel free to pick whichever is your favorite. Or you could just eat the ball. I don't really mind. I'm quite indulgent here. I suppose I, I'll make the most of this, then. It's actually been a while since we've gone on a drive. Indeed, it has. You're always so full of energy at the start, but we end up dozing off halfway back. I still remember how lonely I felt driving through the tunnel with nothing to do but chew gum. Really? Uh, sorry about that. Don't be. It's, if, when you take the wheel, it's, it just comes, sort of comes to the territory. God, why'd it get so loud all of a sudden? God, stop, stop, stop. That was weird. Okay, like... That was very strange how it just spiked really high all of a sudden. Speaking of which, where are we going exactly? Any requests? Huh? You're asking me? Um... Well, it's winter, so it'd be nice to see some snow. I'd like to go up north. As you wish. Now, I think I might have... Okay, I think some other stuff might have... Yeah, let's turn this tech speed up a bit more. I, I don't know what happened there all of a sudden. Off we go, then. To Cape Soya, to the tip of the north. I can't wait. Have you ever been to Hokkaido, Mr. Samajima? On a few occasions, yes. I visited there on a trip with my family when I was still little. Their winters are cold, really cold. That was also the first time I ate a crab. Which reminds me, I don't have any left. I noticed the length of your instructions were, but I didn't realize you actually added recipes in there too. I had everything from ta uh, Takikomi to uh, Gohan to Kenshu Jiro. It really helped me out. I'm glad to hear you've made good use of it. I really wouldn't mind going there. Or even to a place no one knows. As long as that's as long as that's what you wanted. Mr. Samajima? Keido. Our real destination is a hospital. Huh? Uh are you sick, Mr. Samajima? This isn't about me, Kato. You're the one that needs to be looked at. What? But I don't have a fever. I'm pretty sure I'm not injured or either. I've I've heard you were on the streets in the middle of the storm yesterday. And that you weren't quite yourself. Ah. In that moment, my mind just completely blanked out. Mr. Samajima knew everything. He knew about Rio living at my house. And even what happened during the storm. Ah. <sighs> There's nothing to be scared of. They're just going to take a look at you. Kato, it's going to be fine. No! I don't want to go! Kato. 
I'm not going. You lied to me. You lured me into the car so I couldn't escape. You need to calm down. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm completely sane. I've had enough of this. Stop the, stop the car right now. <sighs> I'm afraid I can't do that. Why? I promise to look after you. I need to make sure you're okay. So you're just doing this for my dad, not me? That's not true. I'm getting out. I pushed the still speeding car's door wide open. Mr. Samajima's face tensed up like I'd never seen it before. Let me out! Let me out! Kato, close the door! Hurry! This is getting too dangerous. Then stop the car! Close the door. I won't! I'm getting out! You'll only get hurt. Then maybe you should stop the car. Unless you want my dad to hear about this. The car began to gradually lose speed until it came to a complete halt. Wasting no time, I immediately jumped out of the car and started dashing off in the opposite direction. I... I believed him. I trusted him. The demon Mr. Samajima thinks I'm crazy. I believe him. Didn't step on the brakes for your father's sake. Visibly taken aback, Mr. Samajima muttered that to himself. There was no way for me to hear him, though. I was still running, while feeling like the entire world had just betrayed me. The basement of my dad used to makeshift storage room was covered in concrete and had a distinctly chilly air to it. I violently pushed him down there. Holy crap, what? Oh no. Whoa, what gives? Come on now. It's your fault, Ryo. You keep saying all these weird things to people. What are you... Where am I? My house, of course. Let me out of here. Rio was acting strange. Rio? His amber eyes no longer had that intimidating glint to them. He had uh, he had seen I had seen eyes like that before. I won't. You may beg all you want. So, uh, it's your fault, okay? You told Mr. Samajima all those weird things about me. I I trusted you, and yet you're getting the wrong idea. I did it for your sake. Don't just say what's convenient to you. You'll stay here and reflect on what you've done. I addressed Ryo in the coldest tone I could muster. I had to remind myself not to relent. I threw him a piercing glare and tried to mask the, mask the fact that my voice had been trembling. Oh, this is not going to end well. It's just for a little bit. Uh, uh, so try to endure it for now. I locked the door leading to the basement with an audible click. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I felt a thorn prick in my heart when I recalled the face reel I made there at the end. I hope he returns to normal soon. You okay, so? Huh? You're all fidgety. Did you forget something? Uh, no, it's not like that. You really should have gone to the toilet before class, you know. It's not about that either. <sighs> Still, you do look a lot more lively than usual. Huh? Crap, it's the teacher. We gotta get back to our seats. Right. I'm worried about Rio. I don't let him out of the basement! Rio? I brought you some food. Ugh. Only a couple of hours had passed, yet Rio looked more exhausted than I'd ever seen him. My heart ached seeing him like this. I brought you a rice ball and some miso soup and an omelet. Do you think you can eat? Yeah. Ah, uh, oh jeez, you can't do it at all. Uh, please have some water first. Open your mouth. Chew slowly, okay? I feel like we're entering the misery section of the story, apparently. Oh, I'm glad you could actually eat it all that. Why are you doing this? Huh? You lock me up at a place like this and start feeding me? You must have been like that from the start. There's no rhyme or reason to anything you do. What are you trying to achieve exactly? Achieve? Nothing at all. I just want you to reflect on your actions. But it breaks my heart to see you unable to eat, so uh... Are you sorry for what you've done? Can you finally go back to being your usual self? How am I supposed to do that when I never even changed it to begin with? 
Just let me out of here already. Why are you like this? When one night you open the door in your sleep. I've got to be there to protect you. From what? From yourself. Are you telling me to just not sleep at night? Is that it? You're really not making any sense, Ryo. I could say the same about you. What do you even want? What do I want? You already know that, don't you? What? I approached the hesitating Ryo and gave his haggard face a long, hard look. Oh, gosh. I don't like this. Show me your hidden powers. So? Don't play dumb with me. I know everything. You hold the key to the entire world in your hands. That's what made you lose your memories. So, what are you even... Come on, admit it. He's talking about that show, isn't he? Do it, or else. I might find myself disappointed. <laughs> Fine, I'll talk. You know what? I hate this place. It's dark, cramped, and there's cold concrete everywhere. I remember all this. Huh? When I was small, I leaned in completely taken in by a story, but when I did, Rio suddenly bit into my fingers. Ow! What the heck was that for? I knew it! You're still not the Rio I know. Some strange force must be controlling you. This has to be it. So, wake up already. Wake up? You've dreamt enough. What are you talking about? I have no hidden powers, nor any magical abilities. I'm just a guy with amnesia. We're no different, So. You're just like me. Huh? You're a spoiled, somewhat childish 15-year-old with gentle heart. A perfectly ordinary person. Huh. Enough! Stop it! Listen to me. What you're looking for just doesn't exist in this world. Stop it. Stop it! Open your eyes. I don't wanna! You have to. Stop clinging to fantasies. I don't wanna. I don't... I... Ugh. I don't understand. The world never changes. It's always so dull. I refuse to accept that. You see, I have high expectations for this world. And I just don't want to give up on that. So... For the longest time, I had been full of expectations. I believed that the world was filled with mystery and wonder. That one day, I too would be chosen. Mom and Dad, my friends, all the people in our town. They allowed me to live a perfectly a peaceful life devoid of worry and hardship. But I didn't want this gentle stagnation. I craved excitement, vivid colors to paint over the dull grays of life. I had hopes for this world and for myself. I can't just give up on this world or myself. That'd be like accepting things as they are. I won't do that. Do you really think it's wrong for me to feel this way? Is it wrong for me to discuss all this with you? Maybe I shouldn't talk to you anymore. Answer me, Mimia. Please say something. Where is Rio? Where is Rio? It's okay. It's all alright. Everything will be just fine. Uh, there's something truly wonderful and unique in this world. And that something is you. There's no need to be afraid. Really? Yeah. Trust me. Mamiya? I love you, Mamiya. I know. This craving I feel. You understand it, don't you, Mamiya? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I do. All too well. Which is precisely why you can be so menacing at times. Your unquenchable thirst. For the kingdom of the unreal. Isn't that why I'm here? Why I was left to remain? I will fulfill my duty. Even if it might cause grief to some. 
I'm sure it will be all forgotten soon enough, though. Listen, Gato, I wanted to thank you for that hug. I mean it. It made me really happy. The ripple surfaces of the water. The star-studded sky. I hoped we could exchange a gentle smile. The way we did when we met in that dream. It was all I... <clears throat> It was all I really wanted. Tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, the day after that. As days came and went, things that truly mattered grew vaguer, hazier. Even now, I still yearn for it. Gaining superpowers out of nowhere, getting entangled in a conflict of mind-numbing proportions. He wants to be part of something. Embarking on an epic quest to rescue a girl. Saving the world from impending doom? I desperately wanted to become someone like that. Uh, huh? Where am I? The first thing I saw upon waking was the sea. But why? Why would I wake up in a place like this? Uh, I glimpsed the shadow in the distance. It looked familiar. R Rio! But before I could reach him, Rio fell onto the ground with a grunt. There's so much blood! Ugh. Rio! I have to stop the bleeding. We need to get away from here! I'm coming for you, Rio! Rio made no response, almost like he didn't even hear me. He remained completely motionless. The red of his blood continued to spread through the deep purple of the sea. Oh no. He wasn't going to make it. Rio was going to die. This can't be happening! Rio, don't do this to me! I've got to stop the bleeding! Come on, wake up! Uh, uh, no! This can't be happening! This isn't real! I don't want this! What should I do, Mamiya? Mamiya! Mamiya? I know you're there! Answer me! Uh, no. I can't take this anymore. I wanted a dramatic conclusion. I was even ready to sacrifice myself. Like a true hero. Kato? You are amazing, Kato. Oh. Mom, Dad. I wanted them to smile at me. And call me exceptional. No. I... I don't want... Rio to die. So... Rio. I remember now. Huh? I remember everything. Oh, I see. Including where and when this is. And the reason why we cross paths. He's different. He's not being targeted by a shadowy organization. Nor does he hold the key that would unlock the path to another dimension. He has no hidden powers, either. You and I, we're... He's just an ordinary person, nothing more. I don't need to hear about those memories. They're worthless to me. Shut up. It's... If they're not unique and interesting, I have no need for them. Ooh, boy. Leo collapsed onto the sandy beach with an, an audible thud. He wasn't getting up. The vividness of his crimson blood was a sobering sight. Gah. Rio, why? But... I suppose it's all good. If this is only a dream, after all. And they do say good luck, uh, good luck to kill before a trip. Wait, what? It's good luck to kill before a trip? The world would soon end. I didn't know how much truth there was to it, but people on TV and the news made it out to be a big deal. You could even hear people discussing it in class. Days went by as usual, without anyone truly comprehending that the world would soon end. I still didn't quite understand why I was here. I was certain that the end would happen in the blink of an eye. It would be simple and anticlimactic, like the burst of a soap bubble. Ah, <sighs> I need to wake up. And so, I drifted off to sleep. The night sea groaned softly. 
Surrounded only by the sound of waves, I clenched my fist as I beheld the young boy sleeping on the beach with a constant smile on his face. Why? So, Kato. Wait, what? The door to the institution has been unlocked. Press restart on the title screen. What? Okay. The door to the institution has been unlocked. Press restart. This game's gonna be playing with my head, isn't it? Lovely bubbly. Natsumi died. Uh, did someone pass away? Yes, they're holding a funeral for the boy named Natsumi. Natsumi. Well, uh, I think I might have known him. Oh, really? Probably. At least I think so. In that case, why not bring him some flowers? Huh? Can I? Of course, I'm certain. He would appreciate it. I'm getting a bit tense. No, it's gonna be okay. I just need to get inside. After muttering that to myself, I nodded and took a step forward. Huh. Only to end up bumping into someone. Oh, sorry. Don't worry about it. It was my fault as well. The dark-haired youth made a light bow before running off, almost as if to hide his face. I could tell from the sound of his voice that he'd been crying. I opened the door. A solemn atmosphere hung heavy in the air as I stepped into the, inside the church. Not to me. Ugh. Pfft. Some wept, others looked ahead in silence. Were they all reminiscing about the time they'd spent with him? I hope they are. The service would begin in seconds and I was the only one still standing. I hurriedly scanned my surroundings for a place where I could sit. I... I wonder if they making a choice is different because I can't remember what my first choice was. I think I took a seat on the left. Take a seat deeper in. I'm pretty sure I didn't do that one. I took a seat deeper in. Um, I'll sit next to you if you don't mind. Go ahead. I kept gazing at the flowers far ahead while waiting for the ceremony to begin. Then came the coffin. Everyone around me muttered prayers in remembrance of Natsumi. A chant played in the, as the coffin was carried forward. Hearing the priest's talk, I could hear all I could think about was its contents. A while later, the service began in earnest, accompanied by organ music. The attendees stood up and brought flowers to the coffin. A student with darker skin approached it next. I think nothing of it. I ignored him as I would every other attendee and maintained my silence. The one who approached the coffin next was a dark-haired student with a mole under his eye. I am curious. I find myself somewhat curious about him. I decided to follow him with my gaze. He slowly approached the coffin with a downcast look. The snow-white flowers he carried seemed a perfect match for his prim and proper aura. As he bent over to place his flowers, the glossy locks swayed forward, hiding his eyes. His youthful looks made him appear almost ethereal, and it completely captivated my attention. He then slowly stood up and returned to his seat with his head hanging even lower than before. Ruffling his pinkish hair, a man with an intense look on his face stepped forward. I am curious. Finding myself somewhat curious about him, I decided to follow him with my gaze. Okay. So I'm thinking that the choice is like who I'm curious about perhaps. Because last time I was curious about everybody, and Ryo was the first one, and then we had his story. So now I, di I said I wasn't interested in him, and instead I was curious about the next one. I think it just goes in whoever you're curious about first might be the next path you go down. That's going to be my experiment here. He approached the coffin with a rough, unsteady gait, but by the way he looked, his white flowers of anything but that. Also, I sat next to this guy, so we'll see if that has any impact either. <coughs> Excuse me. He sat covered most of his face, preventing me from discerning his expression. 
In contrast to his earlier demeanor, there was a certain melancholy in the way he placed down his flowers. I was left in awe by that strange uncanny imbalance. Next, the coffin was approached by a tall boy in a school uniform. I think nothing of it. I ignored him as I would every other attendee and maintained my silence. Once again, all, once all the attendees had set their flowers, the funeral came up to a close with a few words addressing the bereaved family. Surrounded by people leaving the hall, I... Hmm. Stay put. Oh, maybe this is the choice, because last time I headed outside for fresh air. So this might be the choice that actually matters. As I stood in place, I realized most of the people had already left, save for a few stragglers. I could still turn back now. Should I really not talk to any of them? Would I really have no regrets? Hmm. It really feels like it's trying to like stop me from doing this. Maybe I'll, I'll uh, uh, I don't know. But I kind of want to follow through. Let's follow through. As I continued standing in place, I was soon left all alone. I silently approached the coffin. As my hand gingerly touched the lid, I heard the door behind me open. Hello. It's you. I'm pretty sure the funeral's already ended. Oh, I just... I just wanted to see Natsumi's face one last time. His seemingly unfamiliar voice made me squint. My fist trembled with rage. Who are you? Now who are you? I deeply I deeply cherished those four and wanted them to be happy. They should have never met fates like that. And yet, everything went to hell because of Mia. I turned around. What are you? The man smiled in lieu of an answer. Putting all my heart and soul into it, I shouted at the man standing near the entrance as loudly as I could. Did I accidentally stumble to the true ending and I should have explored all their stories first? I might have had to do that. I'll ask again. Come on. Answer me. What the hell are you? Ever so slowly, the man before me parted his lips to speak. Mamiya. So I might have made a mistake. All right, so I'm going to stop here, and I need some help. If any of you have been watching this, did I accidentally jump right into the like the like the last story? Because if so, I can undo that, and we can go into the other ones. The, 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 it's a downside to playing a blind game I've never actually considered before. Like, it gave me that out. I should have taken it and gone back and made sure to talk to everybody first. So I can make sure to fix that if that's necessary. But make sure to let me know. If it's not going to be a problem, I'll continue forward from here. But if it is going to be a problem, please let me know. But yes, uh, so we are definitely stopping here. Please, please, please make sure that I don't make messes up too badly. Um, I just want to, I, I want to enjoy this story. And it was definitely interesting. There's a lot more mysteries to explore. And I, like I said, I didn't realize I'd be able to launch myself through here like this. But uh, maybe, maybe I'm just misinterpreting what just happened there. But we will have to see. But anyway, thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you to the patrons who helped me select this series. I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. This is definitely interesting. Holy crap. Like, it's mind-blowingly twisted. And, ooh, that took dark turn real fast at the end. Because that's the thing. It's like, I want to know what happened to Rio. What, like, what happens after all of that? Like, I need to know. So, like, did I miss out on, like, following up on what happens after that scene or not? I just, I, I need to know. So, uh, but I'm really excited to know about that, and I'm looking forward to reading your comments on this one, because good grief, I don't want to mess this one up. Uh, okay, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for uh, joining me for this video once again. I'm looking forward to continuing this series with you <clears throat> as we move forward, but for now, we will stop here. So thank you, and until the next video watching me, I'll see me next. I'll see you there.